For decades, Western leaders have claimed that the Islamic Republic of Iran poses an existential threat to the safety and security of the world by its alleged pursuit of nuclear weapons. Many claim further that Iran is religiously fanatical, anti-Jewish, and that ultimately it seeks to wipe the Jewish state of Israel off the map. To the contrary, Iranian leaders point to their peaceful history and have repeatedly declared that they have never and will never seek nuclear weapons because it is immoral and against God's will. Somebody is lying. In this edition of In Focus, we will expose not only who is lying, but the insane agenda behind the lies. I've come here to Tehran and Iran, a place that we've heard so much about over the years. Now let us imagine that Iran is launching wars of aggression against its neighbors and killing civilians on a regular basis. Let us imagine further that Iran is provably committing war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide according to the Black's Law Dictionary definition of the word. Imagine even further that Iran has illegally acquired hundreds of nuclear weapons and that leaders within Iran have threatened to use those weapons against Europe and beyond if its existence were threatened. Now, if that were the case, we'd all be wise to consider Iran a legitimate threat to global security. The only problem is what I have just described is the criminal activity of Israel, not the Islamic Republic of Iran. So why is it that Israel is treated as a peace-loving democratic nation in the Middle East while the people of Iran are being collectively punished and continuously threatened with all-out war. Uh, they were taken over by the U.S. in a coup d'etat in 1953. The puppet dictator, the Shah, uh, was installed on the throne by the uh, CIA. His torture chambers were built by the CIA. And uh, finally, the, the Iranian people overthrew the Shah and achieved independence in 1979. So when you hear all the propaganda about Iran being a threat, that's really how it's a threat. It's a threat because it's a free and independent country. And if we allow a free and independent country to exist, here, especially here in the Middle East, the other nations might also want to be free and independent. Iran is the ultimate stumbling block for what Israel wants to do in the Middle East, what I, what I prefer to call Southwest Asia, which is a crucial part of Eurasia. Full spectrum dominance over this whole region which implies balkanization of individual states. They have achieved that in Iraq. They are achieving that in Syria. They achieved that in Lebanon. Jordan doesn't count. And Iran is the ultimate stumbling block. So Iran must be demonized because it's against Israeli plans of regional domination. Iran is a threat for the order of the world because Iran contests this order. And uh, uh, Iran is supporting a lot of uh, countries and groups who are contesting this order. So I understand what uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, want to say. He want to say that uh, uh, Iran is a revolutionary, revolutionary country. That's true, yes. We must have a peace in which territories adjacent to Israel are not used as launching grounds for rockets and missiles against the Jewish state. Secondly, we must make sure that the backer of these terrorists, Iran, doesn't have nuclear weapons and nuclear-tipped missiles. Today, we're the targets. But with the ICBMs that they're developing, London would be in range. Washington would be in range. In fact, the whole world could be in range. Gareth Porter is a historian and author of the book Manufactured Crisis. Serious geopolitical analysts consider it to be an authoritative book on the subject of Iran's alleged nuclear weapons program. So would it be accurate to say that the same people who provided us with the dodgy dossier and the other really fraudulent uh, evidence to support the invasion and occupation of Iraq, is it the same people who provided that who are providing this so-called evidence for the Iranian nuclear crisis? It's the same group of neoconservatives within the Bush administration. <clears throat> closely allied with Israel, of course, who were responsible for both. But 
different people were in charge of the details of the plan. In the case of Iraq, of course, it was uh, Paul Wolfowitz and Douglas Fife at the Pentagon. In the case of Iran, however, it was John Bolton at the State Department who had the primary responsibility for Iran policy. We know that he went on unauthorized trips to Israel. The first unauthorized trip in June of 2003, he met with the head of Mossad, and there was no record of what was said in the meeting because it was unauthorized. Uh, and that th uh, a few weeks later, Mossad created a new office, which uh, we know from a journalistic account uh, that was published later, had the function of putting information out to governments and news media about the Iranian nuclear program. The same people who forged the do dodgy dossier claiming that there were WMD in Iraq, which was the excuse for that horrific war that killed over a million people, uh, are doing the same thing with Iran. They actually plotted to implicate Iran in a nuclear program at exactly the same time, using the same people and the same techniques as the dodgy dossier on the Iraqi WMD. So it's another WMD scare, and it's just as bogus as the first one. It was absolutely fraud. They weren't cherry picking. This was out and out fraudulent documentation. This story is very strange because uh, it's continuing since years and years. There is no evidence at all of uh, a military program. Uh, this country was inspected much more than any, more con any other country in the world. Uh, but they continue to, to say it, that this country will have a nuclear bomb next week. Always next week, since years, next week. <laughs> uh. Every month that goes by brings Iran closer to possessing a nuclear weapon. The world is united in support of our determination to prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. Brought a diagram for you. Here's the diagram. Where should a red line be drawn? A red line should be drawn right here. من تاکید می کنم که جمهوری اسلامی هرگز در پی تسلیحات هستی نیست شعار ما انرژی هستی برای همه و سلاح هستی برای هیچ کس است ما بر این هر دو سخن پای خواهیم فشرد ایران از یکی از بیشتر اگرسیف کنتریز در مدرن هستوری uh, it's been continually attacked, invaded, and terrorized, and they've never attacked anybody for uh, a very long time. So they're a, a classically defensive power. If you are an ally, if you join our coalitions, if you're part of the international financial system, etc., you can get away with anything. But if you have a theological political system of government, uh, if you had an Islamic revolution against our own interests in the Middle East and beyond, then you are an outcast, an outsider, a pariah, and you must be isolated, contained, and, if everything fails, bombed. This is America, bombing the world into democracy and freedom. And here we have Secretary of State Hillary Clinton cackling like a clinical psychopath with the prospect of instigating a war of aggression that would in all likelihood lead to World War III. Let us not forget that this woman is the odds-on favor to become the next president of the United States. What we see within this matrix of power is a sickeningly servile mainstream media constantly allowing the lie that Iran is pursuing nuclear weapons to go unchallenged and thus maintaining the illusion of Iran as a threat. Even worse, Charlie Rose actually begins laughing with Hillary Clinton and James Baker about the U.S. government's penchant for World War III. Serious journalism, such as the previous interview, is vastly overshadowed by the far more typical example in the next interview, in which David Cameron is allowed to brush aside the grave threat Israel's hundreds of nuclear weapons pose to all people, and in typical mainstream media servility, the so-called journalist allows Cameron to bamboozle the viewer by diverting back to the fraudulent claim that Iran intends to wipe Israel out.